are many different options that you can use to help you walk or teach your dog. And while there are some great choices out there that you can make to really help in the training process, there are also some really bad ones and I'm going to be talking about them today. This is called a choke collar. And the reason why it's called a choke collar is that it's designed to choke your dog. The premise is that you put this collar on your dog and if the dog pulls, the collar tightens to the point where it's so painful that in theory, the dog should stop pulling. But what actually happens, a lot of dogs, even with a collar like this on, will continue to pull. When they continue to pull, the collar tightens so much to the extent that it cuts off the dog's air supply. Many dogs have had to go to the veterinarian because their tracheas, i.e. their windpipes, have collapsed when collars like these have been used. And sometimes dogs have actually strangled themselves with collars like these. When owners leave a collar like this on their dogs, unsupervised, it gets caught on something. The dog tries to get out of it and will strangle themselves in the process. The best thing to do with this collar is to throw it away. This is known as a pinch collar or prong collar, so called because it has prongs that can dig into your dog's neck. It's the same premise as the choke collar. It doesn't completely choke your dog, but what it does is when the dog pulls, this tightens and the prongs dig into your dog's neck. Because the dog feels discomfort and pain, your dog in theory stops pulling. Again, a lot of dogs that have these kind of collars on will even go through the pain and will hurt themselves. At the end of the day, this prong collar might be slightly better than the choke collar, but you're still causing your dog pain when it's walking. And do you really want to walk a dog when it's in pain? People who use this disgust me because there are so many other ways to teach dogs, regardless of the issue that your dog has. But this is called the remote collar, e-collar or shock collar. And it's designed to give your dog a shock of static electricity if your dog does something you don't like. Now, a lot of people who like using shock collars say that using a shock collar doesn't damage a dog's neck. It doesn't cause the dog pain. It's just a little feeling of static electricity. Well, I can tell you that numerous studies have been done to show how dogs react to these kind of shock collars. And while some dogs might be able to take the static electricity that they get from a shock, many are so traumatized even by one experience of shock that it causes a lifetime of fear. I call this collar quick fix training. And because people love quick fixes, they don't want to put the time and effort that it takes to walk a dog. Where I can actually teach a dog to walk well on a leash, doesn't matter regardless of the dog, the size of the dog, or the issue, to walk well on a leash in about 10 minutes. I would rather take a little time to teach a dog how to walk well on a leash or to deal with a problem behavior than using and relying on something as inhumane as shocking my dog into complying. Most people who use these kind of things when training have no idea of the psychological negative impact it's having on their dog. Because so many trainers use stuff like this and so many people validate their use. To me though, and to thousands of trainers like me, and the best scientists and behaviorists in the United States and around the world, these contraptions are plain abuse. And so the best place for all of these is in the trash where they belong. So what are the solutions? You want to be able to walk your dog, but you're finding it too hard to teach your dog just on a regular collar and leash. Well, some of the solutions come in the form of harnesses. And you can use great harnesses for your dog that will actually prevent your dog from pulling while you're in the teaching process. Because at the end of the day, you want to be able to get to the point where you're walking your dog just on a regular collar and leash. I like these kind of harnesses. These kind of harnesses lead a dog by the chest. A leash is attached to a loop that centers on the chest area so that when the dog pulls, the dog's body comes round. The weight is distributed evenly around the body rather than just concentrated around the sensitive area of the neck. So you can use a harness like this in order to help 
walk your dog in order to help control your dog while you're also teaching your dog to walk well on a collar. Remember, when you're choosing a piece of equipment to help teach or walk your dog, make sure you do it positively. I'm Victoria Stirwell with my friend Bud here for eHow Pets.